Hi everyone. Right, in my last video, I talked about um, the um, G field generator and the booking field generator. Now, the standard method of generating power that pretty much everyone uses um, is well known, so I'm not going to cover that one. As I said, covered the uh, G field generator and the booking field generator. There is, however, another type that seems to have been forgotten. It's similar to the way the uh, um, the Cromfield works. Um, I said similar. It's an interesting one, and it requires a little bit of uh, um, imagination and um, engineering to make it work. Um, Anyway, in all of the three types of generation methods, um, the coils, in this case the hashed bits that we've got here, right, will only generate power if the flux field from the magnet going round is moving. Once it's stable and stops moving, right, uh, or stop changing I should say, uh, the coils no longer generate power. So, in order to keep the flux field moving, you either move the coils and the cores relative to the magnet, or you move the magnet relative to the cores and coils. There's another way of doing it. Hehehe. <laughs> I'll pause there just for a moment. There's another way of doing it without moving either the cores and the coils or the magnet. There is. Simple. The flux field comes from the magnet to the core, around the core back to the other side of the magnet. What happens if you interrupt that process? So instead of allowing it oh, pencil needs sharpening let's draw this out quickly for everyone. You yeah, know you love my drawings. Besides, you know if someone uh, draws it right in front of the camera, you know they uh, understand it and haven't just printed it out from somewhere or copied it off somewhere else. Although you still could. It won't be a moment. What happens? If you put another U-shaped piece of iron around the magnet between the magnet and the core with the coils on, what happens? Simple. Flux field goes around this bit instead. Thus, you've interrupted the flux field right, and these coils then generate a pulse in the opposite direction than what they were. So it's the other side of the AC sine wave. So you don't have to move the magnet, you don't have to move the cores, but you can move a U-shaped piece of metal between the magnet and the cores. Here's the interesting thing. Lens. Guess what? It actually helps it. Right? When, when this, it's called an interference generator by the way, um, but I'll talk more about its um, origins uh, towards the end. Here's what happens. When you begin to interrupt the flux field with the U-shaped um, 
isolator basically um, when you begin to interrupt it the two coils generate a field opposite to what you're doing and it's called lenses look we all know about it it's a pain in the arse as a general rule not in this case right. so the two coils whichever way you have them up wound up produce an opposite field now we know when the magnet is energizing the core so we allowing the flux field to go into it right. the opposite effect is to produce a north field right. in this case we're interrupting the field as if the magnet's moving away so it generates a south field well guess what you know what's going to happen the south field goes onto um, the isolator around the isolator to the other side in other words it pulls the isolator in ergo it speeds up when it leaves right, it is the equivalent of um, the magnet approaching the coils so as I've said produces a north field so you've got north there, north there now normally that lens field would be bad and it would slow down, however it actually has the opposite effect the reason being that not only does the isolator begin to conduct the field where it can but as it gets further out either up, down, left, right, whichever way whichever orientation you've done it right, the north field from the coils interacts with the north field from the magnet tries to push it away and instead pushes away the isolator because the isolator is partially charged magnetically speaking I should say so what you actually get is a lens effect that speeds the generator up yep speeds it up now the reason why it's difficult is because these gaps here and there have to be incredibly close to get a decent amount of power from it because of the amount of iron that you've got going around the magnet if you don't have if you have a too big of a di distance then Excuse me. Then basically, you don't get a lot out of the coils, and their lens fields don't act on your isolator, which is kind of good, bad, whatever, depending on how you're going to set it up. Also, because of the gap distance, it has to be quite precisely engineered. So you have to conduct and isolate at the same time. Which on a rotor, bear in mind you've got two rotors either side, is extremely difficult to do. I tried this two, three years ago. Um, and I made a complete bodge up of it. Uh, it worked up to a point, but it was in a very limited fashion and at that time I didn't know a fraction of what I know now so I would love at some point to engineer this and have another stab at it but it's just a case of taking the time to do it at the moment or having the time I should say but let's make everyone else aware of it um, I did feature it on uh, uh, the Teak Forum uh, about three years ago when I was doing it all the diagrams etc um, I picked it up from another YouTube user by the name of Dave Qualley 
uh, his YouTube channel, if you do a search for it, is D Quali, and that's spelt um, D Q U A L E. Yes, I'll put a link in the um, comments box to his channel. He hasn't posted anything for like over two years for some reason. I'm not quite sure why, but his plans, etc., are basically on his YouTube channel. So take a look. Also, he has a website up, which is still up quite amazingly. Um, he's got a link to it on his channel page. Oh, what's it called? Hang on, it's in here somewhere. There we go. Overunitybuilder.com. Uh, I'll put this in the um, info box as well, in which he um, shows various. Uh, um, types of motors uh, some of them quite interesting actually if you uh, take a read take a look at them it also shows the flux fields etc etc um, so what can I say take a look um, decide for yourself if you want to have a play with that um, does require quite a bit of perseverance. Um, I suppose you could. Um, hmm, it'd be a bit difficult, but I suppose you could engineer a bike wheel to do it. Um, because you can fit the steel isolator onto the bike rim. Thinking about it, that might be the best way for uh, people to go. Hmm. Of course, you'd need big enough magnets, so you're probably talking one inch circular magnets. Something like that. But you don't have to have two coils as I've drawn here. You can have one coil just on this back side, going up that way. Yep, going up that way. If the back side of this was flat, you'd just have one coil there. You have three coils four coils, five, as many as you want, it's completely indifferent. In fact, I would go so far as to say that you could, if you really wanted to be uh, bold and brave and um, could understand the results, you could have um, a set of G-field generator coils in a pair of booking field coils. Yeah. Now that's got people thinking, hasn't it? So basically you have four coils right, with two pairs of coils set up as a G-field but those pairs are linked together in a booking field. Try it. Might get some interesting results. Uh, might open a black hole and suck us all into hell. Who knows? Um, to the best of my knowledge, no one's tried it. Um, and as I said, um, creativity is the key to free energy devices. You can't just copy what everyone else is doing and follow their rules. You have to be creative. You have to be imaginative. Try it. Find out. Now it's one thing to ask, will XYZ work? Well, the answer is it depends on what you're trying to do with it. Uh, will it be over unity? Oh, God knows. Go and try it. If you don't try, you'll never know. And if you rely on the answers from everyone else, we'll never get over unity. Right. Try it yourselves find out, post your results. That way everyone knows that the way that you've just done it isn't the way to do it. So, you go and try something else. Something not already listed because what is already listed doesn't work. But in the terms of over unity. Now, obviously, free energy as a whole 
has different objectives within that and it depends on what you want as your own objective I can't say more than that if you just want to recover um, lead acid batteries and that's relatively speaking simple if you want to be the first to produce an over unity device um, self running solve uh, the world's energy problems then following what everyone else has done is not the answer experimentation variation trying things differently turning things upside down inside out and trying that even if everyone else says nope that'll never work you're insane you're a madman you're a complete idiot try it even if you never repost the results try it because only by experimenting with differences will the key be uncovered and that's what you've got to do anyway I've yabbered on for far too long I'm keeping this one short this time uh, and besides some of us have work to do as well unfortunately I really probably should look into doing a uh, live video stream at some point that'd be kind of cool Hmm. Anyway, have fun, take care, feel free to comment, um, agree with me, disagree, like me, hate me, okay, whatever. Um, just get on with the experimenting, <laughs> is the only way I can put it. Have fun, take care.